everyone, it's Melinda, and today we're going to be looking at stromatolites, which is a type of fossil. Really, really wicked cool types of fossils. <laughs> um, yeah, so the first specimen I'm going to start showing you is this beauty right here. Um, so labeled stromatolites fossil algae. Uh, roughly 145 to 165 million years old. And this particular specimen is from uh, Merzuga, Morocco. It is just too cool. I purchased it from one of my very favorite mineral sellers, uh, Novira Minerals, also known as Pretty Rocks Cheap on Etsy. Absolutely love every specimen I receive from them. One of my very favorite sellers for sure. Oh, this is just too cool. Look at this. Wicked. Uh, totally mind-blowing. All right, let's get into it, folks. So stromatolites or stromatoliths are layered sedimentary formations that are created by photosynthetic cyanobacteria. These microorganisms produce adhesive compounds that cement sand or other rocky materials to form mineral microbial mats. In turn, these mats build up layer by layer, and you can certainly see that layering process here on the underside of the specimen, um, growing gradually over time. A stromatolite may grow to a meter or more, Although they are uncommon today, fossilized stromatolites provide records of ancient life on Earth. Uh, just absolutely too mind-blowingly cool. Uh, so stromatolites exhibit a variety of forms and structures or morphologies, including conical, stratiform, branching, domal, and I would think this one would uh, <laughs> fall under domal. Uh, as well as columnar uh, types. So again, you can see a wide variety of stromatolite fossils in different types of forms. Uh, so stromatolites occur widely in the fossil record of the Precambrian, uh, but are rare today. Very few ancient stromatolites contain fossilized microbes. Absolutely cool. So let's do a little recap because they do tend to be uh, quite technical. So stromatolites, again, are sometimes referred to as stromatoliths, and they are layered accretionary structures formed in shallow water by the trapping, binding, and cementation of sedimentary grains by biofilms of microorganisms, especially cyanobacteria, which is commonly known as blue-green algae. You've probably heard of blue-green algae before. Stromatolites provide some of the most ancient records of life on Earth by fossil remains, which date back more than 3.5 billion years ago. And again, this specimen I just showed you uh, is dated back uh, 145 to 165 million years, but they can go as far back as 3.5 billion years ago. Totally, totally mind-blowing. <laughs> Utterly fascinating. Um, so the next specimens I want to show you and kind of discuss are these three here in the center, which are called um, Mary Ellen Jasper. That is kind of their, um, I don't know if it's a true geological name or a more of a, uh, you know, kind of market name. I'm not sure but it's a very lovely name. I enjoy it a lot. And they are also specimens of stromatolites. They generally come from the Arrowhead region of Minnesota. And I actually was so, so, so lucky to meet this wonderful person, Bobby, um, right here on my, you know, my internet platforms. Totally amazing. I love when those connections are made. Um, and she very graciously sent me these, 
you know, free of charge. Um, and Bobby, if you're out there, I thank you so, so, so much. I love my specimens and I'm so pumped to be, to be making this video right now, uh, which I could not do without you. So thank you so, so much. And I will be sending you some uh, local Ontario specimens soon. I absolutely promise. I promise. Um, but for now, let's get into how amazing these specimens are that you so graciously sent me. Thank you so much. All right, so Mary Ellen Jasper. Um, let's start with this really red specimen. So cool. Let's see if I could get it focused. There we go. Amazing. Oh, so beautiful. So Mary Ellen Jasper has a very cool swirling pattern of red jasper and hematite. Um, and it does, as I've been saying, contain fossiliferous, um, for, or fossiliferous <laughs> stromatolite. It is, these ones in particular are about 2.1 billion years old, so older than the specimen we just recently saw. Uh, and the species is thought to be considered Colonia undosa. Really neat. And I did not know what uh, Colonia undosa meant. And so the obsessive person in me just had to look that up. And now I'm going to share it with you. So <laughs> here's a nice, another little small piece. And you can see a lot more of the hematite in this one rather than the red jasper. Too cool. Uh, so the colonia are, again, stromatolites. No <laughs> surprise there. Uh, and they're made up of convex layers uh, flattened in the center forming columnar colonies. The microorganisms involved were likely photosynthetic bacteria expiring oxygen. So the fossilized remains of these... Um, cyanobacteria, they were actually once responsible for uh, producing oxygen on our planet, which is why they are so, um, you know, interesting and important to our, you know, understanding of our, of the Earth's history. <laughs> Too neat. And the large one is my favorite. So I left it for last because you can really see those textures, those stromatolite textures within the hematite. And there's even a little bit of yellow going on there mixed in with the red. Too cool. Just so amazing. <laughs> I love them. And I'm so grateful to my new friend. Thank you, Bobby. I love these. You sent them to someone who will very much appreciate them. <laughs> I love that there's a little bit more yellow in here. Oh, absolutely stunning. Too cool. So those are all of my actual stromatolite specimens. Next up is my specimen. It's a tumbled uh, stone or a uh, polished kind of palm stone of Kambaba Jasper. And Kambaba Jasper is very controversial. Is it a stromatolite or is it not? And we'll get into that in just a second. Uh, before I move on to that, I want to say that there is also a very simil uh, similar looking um, stone out there, rock out there, specimen. Um, oops, a little bit of freezing there. Um, called Nebula Stone. But you can tell Nebula Stone from Kambaba Jasper very easily because Kambaba Jasper has a green background and black spheres or circles inside, uh, whereas Nebula is the opposite, a black background with green circles inside. So that's how you can tell those two apart. And I see misidentifications going around like crazy about those two, so I thought it was worth mentioning. Um, okay, so back to Kambaba Jasper, which is what we have here. And Kambaba Jasper, again, is a trade name for this really beautiful looking material, um, but we'll get into what it really consists of. Um, so, Kambaba Jasper, the very um, popular common belief 
uh, is that it is a stromatolite jasper. Sometimes it is actually labeled green stromatolite jasper. Um, and again, that's because it's commonly thought to be an extremely old stone dating back to 3 billion years ago. Uh, these particular specimens are formed in Madagascar and South Africa only. And it is, again, it's believed to be a sedimentary stone consisting of microcrystalline quartz and a primordial form of blue-green algae. Um, thus, you know, popular believed to be stromatolites. However, and the however is very important. Please don't stop watching at this point. This is the important part. Um, on Mindat, uh, there is reference made to mineral testing that was done at an institute in Germany. Uh, and the findings state that the greenish colored rock, the background here, consists of quartz, agarine, albite, and K feldspar. The blackish rounded aggregates consist of needles of amphibole mineral usually rebekite to paragasite. Therefore, the most recent research uh, suggests that the structure of the specimen is due to a variety of minerals rather than stromatolite uh, fossils being included within its structure. So, um, again, you know, a lot of people who are more hardcore into the science geology aspect of mineral, mineral collecting are very adamant about educating that these are not, in fact, stromatolites. Um, so, you know, I just thought I would include it in this video because they are so commonly believed to be stromatolites. Um, and I just thought it would be a good opportunity to kind of uh, present the research and, you know, discuss the controversy and, yeah, provide you guys with all the details you need to make up your own decision on the matter. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Okay, so there are all of my stromatolite fossils, um, as well as a maybe mis commonly mislabeled stromatolite uh, stone called Kambaba Jasper. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Thank you so much for stopping by, guys. See you next time.